Making the most of every opportunity is the key to success. Whether in road hockey or on the road to national prosperity, we all have a stake in the building of Canada's economic future. And what keeps Canada rolling is infrastructure. Infrastructure is basically the backbone of a civil society. It's the water and sewer mains that provide fresh water, uh, wastewater treatment. It's the roads that allow people to visit their loved ones, go to work. It allows goods to be transported through the region to other markets. From the roads we travel, the subways we ride, the bridges we cross, infrastructure creates jobs, boosts trade, and is crucial to productivity. Infrastructure mega projects create modern marvels. The Confederation Bridge brought the world to PEI, and the Canada Line transformed transit in Vancouver, winning golden reviews at the Olympics. But are we keeping up? Are we properly maintaining our infrastructure? Is Canada investing enough to meet the challenges of the 21st century? Stable infrastructure spending is very important uh, in terms of city building and keeping on top of infrastructure repair. Nothing lasts forever. The infrastructure we're standing in front of right now is at least 50 years old, so it's reached the end of its useful life. So it's very important to reinvest in infrastructure and that stable funding is a way that we can make those investments over time. But new research finds we're shortchanging our infrastructure needs. And if trends continue, Canada's economy could be put at risk simply by not maximizing future potential. Our work, uh, from a macroeconomic point of view, um, we had concluded that uh, there, is a, there is a degree of underinvestment uh, in the current long-term trend of infrastructure uh, spending in the country. At the moment, spending levels are on average about 3.1%. Our analysis suggests that that could be increased to 5% in order to be able to maximize uh, economic benefits. That point is emulated by the fact that we have our diagram, which shows that for different levels of infrastructure investment, what could the value of the economy look like uh, in 50 years' time? The lower point of the diagram uh, represents the current long-term infrastructure spending of 3.1% of GDP. Now the analysis is showing in the green area what we call, say, the safer plateau is where infrastructure spending has increased up to 5% of GDP. With population and economic growth requiring stable infrastructure spending, the risks of falling behind are stark. The consequences are lower real GDP over time. Uh, lower wage levels because it's affecting the productivity uh, of the work effort of the community. Business after tax profits uh, will be uh, uh, at risk as well uh, given that uh, the, the, the prosperity and productivity of the business is dependent upon infrastructure. Who will pay in the end? All of us. But research shows it'll be younger Canadians getting hit the hardest. The burden is borne by the younger generation because they have uh, you know, more years of working life ahead of them. We calculated uh, what it would cost over the working life of people who work today uh, over the next, say, 50 years or to the end of their working life. So the impact upon uh, not pursuing a higher infrastructure investment level for someone, say, at the age of 15 working today can be as high as $51,000. Now, if that figure were to be wisely invested today, over that young person's lifetime, it could be worth $345,000. And here are the potential dollar losses for other Canadians, tens of thousands. And that's a pretty big price to pay. It's clear, the risks of short-changing infrastructure and the rewards of investing in the future for business, families, and the next generation. Stable infrastructure spending is a worthy investment. So that the roads they play on today will still lead to bigger dreams.